Hello, and welcome to our Student Experience Webinar. My name is Yesenia Monares, and I am an Enrollment Advisor for the Master of Communication Management Online Program. And I'd really just like to thank everyone for joining us and taking time out of your busy schedules to join us. So before we, be we begin, I'd like to review what you can expect throughout the presentation. Uh, so to cut down on background noise, please mute your phone lines at so as to not to disturb the presenters. If you have any questions for our speakers, please type them in the Q&A box in the lower right-hand corner of your screen and hit send. Feel free to enter your questions as you think of them, and then we'll be sure to answer as many questions as the time allows at the end of the presentation. And lastly, a copy of the presentation and recording will be available shortly. So in today's agenda, here's a quick look at what we'll be covering. Uh, first, you will hear from our program director, Neil Teixeira, who will be giving a brief overview of the program. And he'll be introducing two of our alumni, Angelisa Granillo and Mark Carpenter. And they will be going over various items, including their experience in the program and why they chose to attend the University of Southern California to complete their Master of Communication Management. We will also be going over the admissions requirements, and we will also uh, cover a few of the questions at the end of the session. So now, let's begin. Hi, Neil. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, Yesenia. Thank you so much. Uh, and thank you once again to everyone that has taken time out of their busy schedules to attend our webinar today. I, along with our alumni presenters, are looking forward to sharing some helpful information about USC, the Annenberg School, and many of the outstanding elements of the online Master of Communication Management, including how you can start an application for our spring semester today. My name is Neil Teixeira. I'm the Director of Distance Learning at the USC Annenberg School. I am also an alumnus of the USC Master of Communication Management program, uh, however, the on-campus version of it. Uh, I, was helped, uh, I was brought on to Annenberg to help bring that version online back in 2011, and since then we've graduated hundreds of students and currently have over 200 students uh, taking master's courses in our program. So let's start off by talking a little bit about USC and the, Annenberg, and the USC Annenberg School. USC was founded in 1880, back when LA was a small western outpost that had only welcomed the arrival of the railroad four years prior. Since then, the University of Southern California has grown to become one of the world's leading private research universities. USC has regularly enrolled more international students than any other American institution of higher learning and holds research-based education that can be applied to professional practice as a cornerstone of the institution. In keeping with this, USC has long been a pioneer in distance education, offering master's level classes to professional engineers via satellite as early as 1972. The USC Annenberg School is proud to continue that pioneering tradition by offering our fully online MCM degree to communication professionals all over the world. USC's Annenberg School was founded in 1971 through the generosity and leadership of Ambassador Walter H. Annenberg you may know him better as the creator of TV Guide, Seventeen Mag Magazine, and through his family's long legacy of supporting public television and the arts. Today, USC Annenberg is renowned for its innovative approach to communication, teaching, and research, and serves as an in international hub for scholars and professionals in communication, journalism, public policy, media, and education. The online Master of Communication Management enables the USC Annenberg School to, to deliver that same high-quality educational experience in a rigorous, engaging, and collaborative way. By the way, that picture on the slide is of our 2017 graduating class of online MCM students attending our annual graduation barbecue prior to commencement. So we also host a reception and tailgate for homecoming, so not everything is online around here. Before I discuss the program in more detail, I would like to briefly share USC's accreditation and ranking information which reflect the university and the school's commitment to excellence in higher education. USC and the Online Master of Communication Management Program have both been reviewed and accredited by, the, by WASC, and USC is currently ranked in the top 25 among national universities by US News and World Report. Additionally, the Wall Street Journal's comprehensive 2018 college rankings placed USC in the 15th spot nationally and third among all Western institutions. And among all institutions in the world, QS World Rankings 
for 2018 rated USC Annenberg the top institution for communication and media studies in the U.S. and second highest ranked anywhere in the world. Before I introduce our panel, we'll turn to our program's curriculum faculty and some of the advantages you'll have as a USC online Annenberg student. The MCM program has been designed for both early and experienced working professionals. Everyone you'll be taking classes with will play a role in your learning. You'll share your work experiences, you'll talk about issues that you are currently facing on the job, and you'll get as much out of the people you are going to class with as you will from your instructors. Our program is done cohort style, which means you will go through the program with the same group of people over the courses of your, of your classes. Typically, each class is divided into sections of no more than 20 people. That doesn't mean you'll have the same 20 people all the time, but everyone will have gone through the same courses that you have gone through. You can complete this program in less than two years, 16 months to be exact. This is important, we found, for working professionals. You have a lot on your plate, and you have a lot of responsibilities at work, at home, and taking classes will add considerably to that workload. So we know that it's really important for you to get through this as quickly as possible. And we think that completing the program two classes per term in about 16 months is the best way for you to achieve your goal of earning a master's degree from USC. What does the MCM mean? Well, this is a management degree for communication professionals. We operate from the understanding that communication is at the center of every enterprise. We also believe that communicators shape and change the world, and this is a degree that is offered to communicators like yourselves so you feel empowered to lead within your organizations. And what we found is that the learning is phenomenal online. In the on-campus program, when you come to class for three hours, the class moves at a particular pace, and you're forced to move at that same pace. In the online program, you're actually able to cover far greater material and far greater depths because you are working on it more incrementally. Of course, you'll also be working in groups and working with your colleagues in your cohort on a regular basis. I think that's an extraordinary advantage of our online learning program because the ability to work in virtual teams is becoming increasingly essential in the modern workplace. So some of our learning career opportunities I'll share briefly, but I think that our alumni panel will probably speak more to how the program has impacted them. So this is a program designed to help you analyze complex business issues, to gather and analyze research. And so one of the core uh, competencies and classes of the program is a research, uh, communication research course. And we want you to be able, at the end of the program, to design communication that has a global perspective. So you may be working on something for your organization um, that is specifically tailored to uh, a national demand, but we want you to be able to look beyond that and develop communication that um, addresses new and emerging markets. Graduates in our program are optimally positioned for careers in management consulting, training, development, public relations, advertising, business, marketing, and other types of promotions. Let's talk about the classes you'll be going through and the curriculum you'll engage in. The way the program is set up, students will optimally take two classes per semester. And everyone begins with the core research class, Uses of Communication and Research, which is CMGT 540. And then also the core management theory class, which is Managing Communication 500. What I want everyone to understand about these courses is that they're not all theory-based. These are designed to be applied immediately to your places of work. And I know that our alumni will be able to speak to that. What we tell all of our incoming students is, we expect that you'll be able to take what you learn in class and begin applying it to your place of work, your professional environment, within a matter of days. And we mean that quite literally. And we have students who email us throughout the semester saying, I know you told me this, I didn't quite believe it, but let me tell you that what I learned in class last week uh, came up in a meeting and I was able to speak intelligently about it using some of the things that we learned in class. So that's something that I want everyone here to take away is that this is an applied program. Uh, this is theory and research is at the foundation of how we understand complex problems. However, the application of the theory and the research is how we solve those problems. And that's what this program will focus on. Some of the other courses include 
um, strategic corporate communication, which is a, a course that helps you develop communication plans and address different stakeholders. Uh, we have communicating strategy and change, which is, our, which is our change management course. So if your organization is going through some major changes right now, that may be a really helpful course for you to either help your team go through that change or just to help you understand the framework in which organizations process change. We have courses in integrated marketing communications, in online marketing communication development and analysis, global marketing communication. And there's one course in there that has a kind of an interesting name, Communication Attitudes, Values, and Behavior. That's our persuasion course. That, that course looks at uh, campaigns, persuasive campaigns. They could be um, uh, commercial advertisements, political campaigns, nonprofit campaigns, but understanding how we affect and move people to make decisions. Uh, and I think that that's a really valuable course as well. So again, a very applied curriculum. You will take eight courses uh, drawn from, from this batch of courses. Uh, depending on when you start the program, different courses will be available in different terms. Um, but uh, the focuses are strategic organizational communication, marketing and PR communication, and then communication for data-driven decision making. So with that, I'd like to introduce our first alumni guest speaker. Her name is Angelisa Granillo, and uh, she has just recently graduated from the online MCM program. I'll give, your, give her a moment to introduce herself. Angelisa? Hi, everyone. My name is Angelisa. Um, as Neil said, I just recently graduated from the online MCM program. And I'm currently an account manager at Idea Hall, which is an integrated PR, marketing, and advertising firm in Costa Mesa, California. So currently in my role, I oversee various accounts in the business-to-business -business and business-to-consumer arena, uh, primarily in the commercial real estate and hospitality industry. So what my day-to-day -day looks like is working with architects, developers, and builders in the hospitality arena, um, working to think strategically and come up with plans to help them better promote their business, projects, and services in Southern California. And we do that through PR, social media, and advertising. Um, the MCM program has really allowed me to take my strategic thinking to the next level, allowing me to work on really exciting accounts. And since being in the program, I was actually able um, to take on this new management position that I'm currently in. And it's been exciting taking what I've learned in the program and implementing it into my day-to-day -day task. Great. Thank you so much, Angelisa. I'm going to introduce our next speaker. And if you could just hold on tight, we'll get to our next set of topics and questions. Our next alumni guest speaker is Mark Carpenter, also graduated recently from the online MCM program. He is the sports director at KRLN TV in San Francisco, uh, a title that he just recently earned. Uh, Mark, welcome. Please introduce yourself and let us know about how that happened. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Neil. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm the sports director at Cron TV. It's a, a local television news station based in San Francisco. Um, I was recently promoted to sports director, and a lot of my time spent in this program and um, my supervisor seeing that, that had a lot to do with um, my change in position at the station. So basically my day-to-day -day looks like um, I manage a department of about six people, and we are in charge of covering all the teams throughout the Bay Area. We're talking about two college teams, Warriors, two baseball teams, two NFL teams, hockey teams, soccer teams. So kind of the day-to-day -day is organizing all that, seeing where are the stories, what kind of practices are we doing, which athletes are we interviewing um, and kind of packaging that content in a way which is, you know, consumable for, for our viewers across the Bay Area and creating engaging stories. And, um, you know, my motivation for getting into the, uh, the program is that, you know, the broad, there's a lot of changes happening in the broadcast journalism industry. And so I felt that there was a, great opportunity to be a part of what's happening throughout the industry. And we'll dive into that more as we, uh, we go into the presentation. Great. Thank you so much, Mark. And uh, welcome to both you uh, and to Angelisa. We're going to move on to the next topics. 
And what I'll be doing is asking you some questions about your own experience as a way to share with our audience um, how you made choices or how you experienced the program. So I'll start off uh, with you, Mark, because you were just on it. Um, why did you choose USC Annenberg as where you wanted to go get uh, a master's in communication? Or a master's in um, so yeah, no, exactly. Um, so I was fortunate enough to get a job in broadcasting right out of my uh, my undergraduate degree, and so I had some some years spent in the industry, and um, I didn't plan on going back to school originally. But surveying the technological landscape and looking at broadcasting as a whole, um, the industry is in a state of massive flux at all levels: local, regional, national. Um, executives have admitted that they don't know what the future is going to look like. You know, TVs, cell phones, computers, how, how is it going to work out? You know, and within the business, people are being asked to do more, embrace new technologies. And with that, I saw an opportunity to find a position that allows me to be at the forefront of how those decisions are made. And USC's communication management program was the perfect fit because um, it's a comprehensive curriculum combined with world-class faculty and it really speaks directly to concepts that allow for high-level management and what it takes to join the executive ranks. And one of the most fascinating aspects is that you're able to work in this program while also working on your career and applying those concepts back and forth simultaneously. Great. Thank you so much, Mark. Angelisa, would you like to answer that question about uh, why you chose USC Annenberg to get a master's or, or why you chose to get a master in communication management? Yeah, of course. Um, to piggyback off of what Mark was saying, um, similarly, I was not originally planning to pursue a master's degree, but as the communication landscape continues to evolve and new technologies are playing a part in how we communicate, I realized that um, I wanted to learn more about that and how my position can evolve from somebody in a PR position to a broader communication management role. Um, so that's truly why I um, sought out the opportunity to pursue a master's degree. And then when looking into different schools, um, I know that USC carries great weight with its name and has um, great faculty. And I just um, did my research and you know, I did also look into other schools and other opportunities. Uh, one thing that I found was that I wasn't getting the same attention and um, help and communication from some of the other um, programs and schools as I was with USC's admission counselors and admission team. Um, and so I felt that if I was going to really take on the responsibility of a master's degree that I wanted to be with a top school, and a team that really uh, values me as part of the program. And so that's why I chose USC. Fantastic. Um, before we move on to the next topic, I would ask uh, if you were to be able to provide to our current um, interested students, our, our current applicants, um, something to help them make that decision-making process, what would it be? And Angelisa or Mark, either one of you can take that question, but if you provide a piece of advice for making uh, a choice across schools, uh, what was some of the reasons why you chose USC? Angelisa, I think you, you briefly touched on that. Mark, uh, any thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I would say that from the jump that USC's um, process was just fantastic, and I felt like they really took a genuine interest in me um, you know, and helping me get into this program and seeing and talking to me and getting to know me and seeing, like, okay, what is your current position? How would this program help? Um, you know, you have an advisor throughout the process that will help you with your, your statement, your, your purpose statement and your, your vision statement and why you want to get into the school. What, why, how would the program really help you? So they really take a genuine interest in looking at you and seeing how, because it, it's a, you have to look at it is that it's, it's a two-way relationship. Would USC work for you? And, you know, would you work for the USC model? And so going back and forth like that and seeing how the advisors really see how they can help you and, and making this work was really the most attractive part of this process and really made you want to be a part of a family, not just another student 
in a program, okay? And, and so you're in this cohort too, and it's also small groups, which makes it um, so nice to work and feel like, you know, you're, you're, being, you're being paid attention to, essentially, and that the, the faculty will be taking a, a genuine interest in, in your success in this program. Great. Thank you so much, both uh, Mark and Angelisa. Uh, that's actually an interesting um, segue into our next topic, which is the MCM experience online. Uh, Mark, you briefly talked about groups. I think we'll touch on that uh, in just a moment. So what was it like taking classes online, Mark? Uh, what, was, what were some of the technological things that may, you may have encountered that you liked, uh, didn't like? Uh, what was the overall feel of being an online student in the MCM program? Uh, well, I would say that one of the things that USC makes sure to do is right off the bat, um, you feel that you are really in a, a graduate program. And, like, of course, as you're applying for it, you know what you're getting into. Um, but one of the messages from the outset presented by Dr. Weintraub is, you know, you're not getting a – a USC light version here, okay? And just because it's online, don't think that, you know, you're getting something that's, a, that's different from the on-campus experience. In many ways, the online experience is, I would say, more difficult than an on-campus experience because you are forced to engage with your classmates. You are forced to engage with your professors. Um, every discussion response is, is you can't just say oh I agree with you good point you have to give a comprehensive response and really dive into the analysis and you are forced to commit and uh, you are forced to carve out time within your professional lives okay you you go to work okay are you going to be working on um, your school work before or after work your weekend you're going to be dedicating time for your weekends and also too you have to communicate with your group mates a lot. A lot of there's a ton of group work throughout this program, so you're forced to engage and carve out time and work out a schedule to make sure that you're able to balance everything. So you're really forced into it. Great, thank you, Mark. Angelisa, same question. Uh, what were some of your thoughts about the online MCM experience, uh, the ways in which you interacted with your classmates or your faculty? and uh, things that uh, you definitely took away from that that um, reinforced why you uh, chose USC. Yeah, so um, going into the online program, I was a little nervous and hesitant about what this would entail and how um, in touch with my professors and um, other students I would truly be, but I soon found out that we were constantly connected, um, working on group projects, um, and even individual, individual projects, um, reaching out to um, each other. We were constantly in contact over a text message, a video chat, um, shared Google documents, you name it. We were always uh, working together no matter whether we were on the East Coast or West Coast or where we were located. Um, we even, some of my group mates and I even took it upon ourselves to find out where some of us uh, we're located in Southern California and met up at coffee shops to um, just kind of get that face-to-face -face interaction. So there is that opportunity to do that, and we sometimes met at campus or um, local coffee shops in, in our area. Um, and then working through the online program, um, everything was right there. It was super helpful to have um, the online resources, the toolbox, and um, all the different resources we can use for our projects, even the online library and online library sessions were super helpful. Um, it didn't require me to go to campus or um, lug around books necessarily, but I was able to, um, you know, hop online. I had somebody uh, through the library who could help me find the text that I was looking for for a research paper um, and just kind of work that way, and that was super helpful. Thank you. Um, so one of the preconceptions that a lot of applicants have about an online program is that it doesn't allow you to build the personal and professional connections or the networking that you would expect in a graduate program. Uh, since so much of graduate school has been touted as being about the networking, can you address that, Mark, as far as uh, the ability that you found um, or didn't find to, to network among your classmates and your faculty at USC Annenberg Online. 
Yeah. Uh, well, one of the things that you learn at the beginning of the program is, uh, you know, Dr. Weintraub discusses that, and you, you'll find that as opposed to an on-campus experience, you'll actually have tighter relationships and a closer network um, going through an online program. And you find that throughout your entire time in the curriculum because you are forced to communicate with your group mates. You're seeing each other over and over. Um, you're constantly exchanging texts, scheduling phone calls, spending your weekends, you know, part of your weekends together, week in, week out, throughout a semester. And so you, you form those bonds because you realize you're going through something difficult together, but it's going to be something that's extremely rewarding. And so you really take time to learn, learn about each other, form personal, genuine relationships. And, you know, I'm happy to say that I still keep in touch with my friends throughout the program. And one of the really neat things is when you get toward the end of the, uh, the curriculum and, you know, graduation weekend, um, you're able to meet in person at a barbecue at a, at a program at the program barbecue, and so you're able to really, you know, meet in person. But you feel like you've known each other for so long already, and then that's because you have. You've been talking for so long for the last year and a half already, and so it's um, you really form some some lifelong relationships. Angel Lisa, anything you'd like to add to that? Yeah, just to piggyback off of what Mark was saying, um, there were some of the um, friends I made in the program that I wasn't able to connect with in person right away, and we were constantly talking um, for the last year or so over video chat, but as soon as we saw each other and connected in person at graduation, it was like, they're your best friend and you've known them forever, but, you know, truly, it's the first time you're interacting in person, so it seems kind of funny to, you know, my family members and everyone else that was there, but to us, it was uh, really natural, and I really felt like I got to know everybody. Um, you know, I mean, while a lot of it was work, we did, um, we're you're going through something together. So you do talk about family, personal stuff w with each other. You talk about work and, and how this program applies to work and learning about what everyone's doing because um, I personally come from a PR background, but I've worked with uh, people that were in advertising and marketing, um, broadcasting like Mark, and um, it's really unique, the friendships and relationships that you make, because everyone comes from different disciplines within the communication background. That's a great point, and thank you for sharing that, Angelisa. Uh, Angelisa, I'm going to uh, ask a, a follow-up. Um, you talked about, um, you know, engaging the program and, and staying on top of the work and managing your workload. Can you talk about um, how the learning management system allows you to stay focused on task um, and manage your time? Yeah, definitely. Um, so one great resource that comes with the online uh, program is um, a checklist. So for each week, there's a physically checked boxes next to each task. And I would use that um, all the time to, to stay um, up to date with what I've completed because um, if you're doing the two course um, a semester track, um, you know, things get really busy with work and school and personal life. So having that checkbox is really helpful to me. Um, and then I also just use a lot of uh, communication tools um, that were both provided through the uh, program and then also other online tools like uh, Google Docs and, and Google Sheets and all of that to communicate with, um, with my other classmates. Great. Mark? Could you talk about what it's like to be in a live session with faculty and your classmates, how that maybe helps bridge the face-to-face -face gap? Oh, live sessions are tremendous because you feel like you are, you really are in a lecture hall and you're really in a classroom with your classmates and, you know, talking with a, with a professor. Um, yeah, the live sessions were so rewarding because you're able to really hear from the professor themselves on what the expectations are for, you know, the course, for the assignments for the week, for the projects coming up, and you're also able to bond with your classmates as well. And the live sessions are also a way in which, you know, we talked about, you know, the entire online experience and carving out time. Well, the live sessions are really a natural way to force you to kind of rearrange your schedule a little bit to see, to, to make it fit, to make it work, because there will be times where, live sessions are mandatory. So you're going to have instances where it's like, hey, 
you know, I need to step away from the office for a little bit to attend this. And um, you'll find that the, the sessions are so valuable because you're able to ask the professor directly and get a response immediately. Okay, what is the expectation for this week? Uh, what's it going to look like? You know, uh, what, what's the page limit? Even something like that. You know, you're able to have responses and really have a discourse about, you know, how the course is laid out, how the assignments are, and, you know, that's all built into the entire online experience and, you know, the, the, the commitment to it as a whole. Thanks, Mark. Angelie, is anything you want to add to your own experience with uh, live sessions with your classmates? Yeah, similar to what Mark said, the live sessions are a great resource for you and a great time to ask um, any questions you have. But also what I found super helpful is that it's a place where you can hear other people's questions um, because sometimes you don't think of that um, and you're able to hear their questions and the responses to those and that helps you um, better handle the project that you're working on or assignments that you're working on. So I think just being able to connect with other people and, and hear um, what's on their minds was really helpful to me um, to have those live sessions, whether they were weekly or, or biweekly. And, and um, like Mark said, you do have to carve out time. Um, usually they were in a good uh, time frame where it's after work or whatnot, but you know there are some times where you do have to make um, arrangements, and I think that's just part of the program, just learning how to pivot and balance everything. And the first semester is really hard um, because it's a balancing act, but after that, it does get a lot easier. And then Neil, I would yeah. add something to that as well. Um, that you know you'll find that in addition to the weekly live sessions with your professor. Um, you'll find that you'll be scheduling your own live sessions with your group. And while it is easy to try and you, you, you think you can just email back and forth with each other or, you know, just shoot a text, the live sessions are extremely valuable when it comes to group work because you're able to have that face-to-face -face communication and really get on the same page because in an online program there will be instances in which, you know, tone gets lost in digital communication. You don't know how somebody said something or wait, they don't want they don't want to work on this, but when you're able to meet face to face in a sense, um, you're able to really hash out who's doing what for the week, how the project's gonna look, and really build something together. Thank you so much for adding right. that. Uh, Angelique, thank you and, and Mark, thank you. Anything else? No, I would hundred percent no, uh for with that, what Mark said, um, it's really important to take, um, you know, initiative and set up your own group calls and um, Skype sessions or, or Google Hangout sessions, whatever platform you use. I think, like Mark said, it's really hard to get lost, uh, communication to get lost through different platforms. And so being able to um, talk uh, through a camera can really help um, with your group project work. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, one quick note about this. Uh, I know Angelisa mentioned that you know making arrangements for uh, live sessions that may not be at the you know always the best time for each individual student. Uh, the truth is most live sessions are record recorded. In fact, all of them are recorded. Uh, almost all of them are optional in the sense that if you cannot attend, you can watch the recording of them later. Um, what I, I think is important to note, Angelisa, and I, if if you can confirm. Most students find them so valuable they don't want to miss them. They'd rather be there live than, um, you know, watch the recording later. Uh, it's only when they, there's absolutely no way to attend that, you know, watching the recording is going to be sufficient. Is that pretty much on, on par with your experience? Definitely. There were some times where I had a work event or a meeting where I couldn't make it, and I could um, shoot the professor a note, let her know that I have, you know, this work thing going on, that I will tune into the recorded version um, you know, later in the evening when I get home. Um, and also, I would also communicate with my um, group mates and just say, hey, can you um, be sure that we ask this question during the live session? Um, so I just think keeping that communication with your professor or your group mates is helpful so you can get out of the live session um, what you weren't able to. But as Neil said, they are super important. Um, so whenever I could attend, I would uh, make it a point to. Thanks. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next topic, which is about our faculty and also in some ways about our curriculum. And I want to ask um, you both about your experiences with your faculty and if you could recall any specific course 
or element of a course or assignment, uh, or potentially just an interaction with a faculty member that stands out in your mind as having an impact on your experience in the program, or uh, an impact, significant impact on what you do professionally. Um, Mark, if you could, um, if you could start. Um, yeah, I mean, as I mentioned earlier, the, the faculty really is world class, and you'll find very early on throughout this program is that they understand what you're going through. They understand the requirements. They understand how difficult this program is, and um, but at that same time, they make sure to, to they they understand that you know they need to be available and to make it to help ease your transition into this to this difficult program and. Um, there are instances in each of my classes in which I, had, I was stumped on a research project, okay? and I could reach out to a professor on the weekends, and I was able to get a response um, the next day and clearing up my issue. And um, I want to point out um, Dr. Curtis. I had him in uh, multiple courses, and he was he was just one of many professors which were so good at Okay, let's make a phone appointment to discuss this further. Okay, if you're if you're confused about this or you have a question about how to pursue something like this, okay, yeah, let's carve out some time. Let's hash this out. Let's really, um, you know, because they really want you to succeed. Okay, nobody wants to see you, um, you know, struggle through this program. They all want to see you succeed, and they're so helpful in making sure that you feel welcome and being available and clearing up any confusion that you may have throughout the entire process. Thank you so much. Um, Angelisa. Yeah, I too had a great experience with the MCM faculty. Um, as Mark noted, um, Dr. Curtis, um, Dr. Mutaswamy, and Dr. Payne and many others were just so great with the communication. Um, when you would shoot them an email and had a question, um, you know, that, like Mark said, uh, more than just responding to um, what you're asking about, they would offer the opportunity to jump on a call with you or on a video session with you so that way they can really make sure you're understanding the assignment and that you're um, you know not just trying to complete the assignment but really truly learn and and hone in on what it is that they're teaching so you can use it in your everyday life and I thought that was um, super helpful um, and has really helped me take a lot away from this program thank you could you share a particular course uh, assignment or element of the MCM program that has made a lasting impact on you professionally? Yeah, uh, for me, it was the CMGT 502, which was Strategic Corporate Communications, and that was the course when we learned how to uh, put together a strategic communication plan from start to finish. Uh, we were given a puzzle by Dr. Weintraub and the, uh, the staff for that class, and um, taught how to put together the, the different pieces of the puzzle, whether it be um, the environment piece or the stakeholder analysis piece, um, to create a um, truly successful strategic communication plan. And that is something that I actually printed out and I have with me today at my desk, and I use it at work as I um, come up with these plans for my clients. I think it's super helpful to know what pieces go together, and I'm learning that in the program. Uh, we did it over and over again. I think we did about five plans throughout the uh, the course. And by the time I was done with the uh, the final assignment, I really felt that I mastered um, the strategic communication plan and um, able to work on those um, in my in my job is um, is something that is reflected in the work that I'm doing today. Great, thank you. Mark, how about you? Anything in, uh, specific from a particular course or a faculty member or an experience that uh, has made a lasting impact on you professionally? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the course that really stands out to me was uh, CMGT 508, Communicating Strategy and Change. And then this was the course in which you have the opportunity to center your final project around uh, an initiative happening at your own place of work. And what was really fascinating about this is that you're taking all the concepts that you've learned throughout the semester and even earlier in the program, and it forces you to go to your supervisors and saying, okay, well, what is happening? Is there something at 
at our workplace or something that you would like to initiate that, uh, that you would like to see change and something implemented, and you're able to work with them hands-on and really see directly, okay, well, how do you want to approach this? How are you approaching it? Um, how many employees is this going to affect? And it's cool in a number of instances. One, because you're able to apply all your coursework um, to your, your your own workplace and really see how it affects your professional life. And also, too, your supervisors and you know the, the your coworkers are able to see directly how the program has already made an impact on you. And they're able to see, wow, you're approaching this with a completely – different frame of mind here, and you're really able to have the opportunity to offer some valuable insight and contributions, and it's a project where, you know, you don't need to wait till the very end or after you're done with the program to start applying these. It allows you to do something real time and really see how change is unfolding right in front of you at your place of business. Fantastic, Mark. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to move on to the next slide, and we'll probably stay on a similar track. Uh, I want to ask about some of the practical applications of our program to your career. So uh, in that same vein, um, can you talk about um, some of the ways in which maybe faculty were able to help connect ideas in class to your professional environment, or ways um, in which, like Mark, uh, and this question is for you, Angelisa, first, uh, like Mark, you're able to apply something from your professional environment as a case study um, in your class. Yeah, definitely. Um, something else that we worked on throughout the program was the uh, research and analysis and um, doing surveys. And that was something that actually I was working on at the same time at work. Uh, one of my clients asked that we do this uh, national survey and that we come up with the questions and that we have strategic thinking behind the questions to get as many participants as possible. Um, and that was something we were uh, learning at the same time in the course, how to best position um, survey questions to get respondents to participate and how to host focus groups. Um, and so that was super helpful that I was doing that at the same time and work in school and was able to um, talk about what I was doing at work with my group mates and with my professor and get some insights there and then also take that back to my colleagues at work and talk about this is the strategies and, that I'm learning in the program and this is how we can apply them to um, create a successful survey for our client. And so it really went hand in hand. It was a unique moment, uh, learning moment for me um, and I really took away a lot away from that. Thanks so much, Angelisa. Uh, Mark, I know you kind of answered that question already a little bit, but I'll, I'll ask one one level further. Um, given that your background, both academically and professionally, was in journalism, and this is not a journalism program specifically, uh, mm -hmm. how did you find the applicability of the course, coursework to what you've been doing on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, it's been it's been so valuable because what's happening, um, I mean. The changes are happening in real time as of now. So, for example, in broadcast journalism, there is a push to go more mobile. And, you know, the understanding is that viewers aren't consuming their news with appointment viewing anymore, okay? No one is no longer sitting down and saying, okay, well, I have to watch the 5 o'clock news. I have to watch the 6 o'clock news. What's happening is that media executives are saying, okay, well, we need to find ways to make our product consumable 24-7 through our phones. And so as a result, um, there are initiatives unfolding throughout the industry in which, you know, we're trying to see to embrace new technologies. And there have been instances in which, you know, there have been new technologies unveiled at our work to see how they're being affected and, how, what kind of resources are needed. So you're constantly talking with your supervisors. You're constantly, you know, put in positions in which you're managing your day-to-day -day skills and also figuring out, okay, well, how are we going to embrace this new future um, opportunity? Okay, how are we going to adapt to these new endeavors? And so that project was really cool. I also want to add that something valuable that was extremely valuable throughout this program was that you'll find really early on that it takes you out of your comfort zone. So I've spent my 
career working in broadcasting and, and, and journalism, that kind of background. But you'll take courses in this program that makes you work with marketing and public relations. And there was a course in which you have to come up with a marketing plan for an actual company. And so my group, we worked, together, we worked on a project for Marriott. And you're developing, you're spending the entire semester developing a marketing plan. I knew nothing about marketing going into it, but then walking away from it, and going through that entire course, you're like, wow, like you've learned some really new skills that you didn't even think that, you know, how could you apply this to your career or how could you apply this to your program? So um, it really was valuable to have that. Great. Thank you so much, Mark. Uh, Angel Lisa, one final question. Um, how immediate did you, were you able to apply what you learned uh, in the program to what you did professionally? Almost every time it was immediately or um, in sync as I was learning um, in the program, I was applying at work the next day. Um, like I mentioned, the strategic communication plans, that's something that I told my, my boss about, like, hey, we're working on strategic communication plans. I know there's one coming up for this client. I would love to take the first stab at it and just really apply what I'm learning. And I think um, something that I learned to do throughout this program, too, is just kind of, um, you know, let, and this depends on your workplace, but, you know, don't be afraid to let your managers know about what you're learning about at school. If they're open to that, um, if they're open to your um, insights and what you're learning, it's a great opportunity for you to directly apply what it is that you're taking away from the program. And so I had this relationship with my manager where I'm able to do that, and it's really great because every time I've learned something, um, or she might ask me, what are you learning? Great, how can we apply that here? And I'm able to apply it directly in my workplace. So it's been, um, that, that whole process is really great for me. Fantastic, thank you, Angel Lisa. Um, I'm gonna ask both you and Mark to stay on the line as we move through the next couple of slides on our uh, upcoming admissions. And I wanted to thank you so much for your responses to these questions. Hold on, we'll have Q&A, and I may call on you uh, there to answer some student, uh, sorry, some prospective student questions. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so I'd much like for to, uh, yeah. Thank you, Yesenia. I just wanted to reintroduce you. Uh, Yesenia, uh, we'll briefly talk about our admissions. Thank you so much, Neil. Um, so as far as admissions requirements, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you will want to complete your application online. And what you'll need is all of your official transcripts from all colleges that you attended. Uh, you, will, you will want a statement of purpose, a writing sample, your professional resume, two letter recommendations. And the GRE or the GMAT is required for the program. However, please keep in mind that students that have a certain amount of full-time work experience can potentially qualify for the GRE waiver. So that's something that your enrollment advisor can go over with you in detail. Um, and then also, as far as like specific questions on the admissions requirements, that's what your enrollment advisor is here for. So any specific questions whatsoever, we're more than happy to go over any of the requirements more in detail. Admissions tips um, as well, pretty straightforward. Deadlines are quickly approaching, so you just have to keep in mind that the holidays are coming up. Um, so it is extremely important for you to reach out to your enrollment advisor as soon as possible. And together, we'll be able to work on a plan that ensures that you will be able to meet all the requirements needed for admission um, right in time in order for you to be reviewed for the spring semester. And just so you know, classes do begin January 9th, and there's still time to apply. Uh, so the main thing is just be proactive and reach out to one of us uh, so that we can help you get started. And so now, um, we'll try to go answer a lot of your questions. There were a few good questions. Um, so again, please remember, if you have any questions, please type it in the Q&A box, and we'll try to get to as many as possible. If we don't get your question, don't worry. We'll be sure to reach out to you and answer that directly. So the first question that I have, Neil, um, are there any exams? And if so, how are they taken? That's a great question. So uh, in truth, there are no uh, what you'd consider midterm or final exams. Some of our courses have uh, quizzes that are meant to be low value quizzes to make sure that uh, you're understanding the material. 
It's a, an assessment tool that helps our faculty stay abreast of how students are learning, uh, but it's not meant to be a large um, you know, evaluation of your ability. Uh, so most of your actual final projects and midterm projects and major assignments are going to be papers, so uh, written, written papers, presentations, and those can be both uh, oral presentations or they might be done via video or they, you might pre-produce some of your presentations to share with your class. Uh, but we put a high emphasis on your ability to communicate uh, orally and in writing. And if you feel like you're not the best writer right now, I promise that when you're done with this program, you'll be a much better writer, not just academically. Of course, academically, you'll probably be a much stronger writer because the program does require you to learn how to write from an academic perspective. But in general, you'll be able to organize and synthesize data and, and to put that into writing so much more effectively um, than you probably are now. It's just one of the cornerstones of our program, and I think probably Mark and Angelisa could attest that, yes, you're, you'll be doing a lot of writing, uh, whether it's an, a paper or maybe just even your discussion board posts. Um, you're writing those out also takes time and thought, and you'll become more practiced at it and faster at it. Good question. Thank you so much for that. Um, so it looks like we have a few students that are looking to maybe make a career change or, or newer professionals. So their question was, you know, if, let's say they don't have experience in the field. Are they still able to be successful in the program? What we're looking for is not years and years of experience, although we do have students who have, um, you know, maybe doing a career transition and they've been working for 20 or more years. Uh, we have some students who are coming in as retirees who are really looking at just uh, gaining new skills and applying them through personal projects or maybe even consulting. Um, but we also have a lot of students who are just starting out, meaning they're in their first or second year of employment. Uh, they are what you consider early career professionals. They are, you know, maybe making those initial first steps of deciding w what trajectory they want to have professionally or what field they really want to work in. And, and within the communication field, there are so many different industries that you can, you know, make your way into, you know, marketing, sales, advertising, PR, um, you know, sports media, all kinds of other stuff. So uh, what we want to see is a balance. Um, and in some cases, it could be heavily skewed towards one side, but at least some balance, two sides of academic experience, you know, your undergraduate institution, and uh, some professional experience, meaning if you've been working for a year or two, that's great. If you've been working for many, many years, even better, we can get a sense of your um, already established career trajectory. Thank you for that. Um, another great question, do online students have the same access to campus resources as on-campus students? That's a really good question. Uh, on the whole, yes. Uh, so as an online student, you get access to a USC card. Uh, that card is your ticket to accessing most of the USC buildings and resources, the libraries. Um, you are you know, eligible to get discounted tickets for USC football and other types of athletic events. You're able to attend events on campus. Uh, you're able at Annenberg to attend any of our Annenberg events. Um, there are so many things that are a part of the campus experience that if you're local and in the online program, you can essentially take advantage of the best of both worlds. You get the, the flexibility and interactivity of being an online student, and then you get all the on-campus stuff. For those who are remote, meaning there's really little chance of, of you being able to come out to USC to regularly take advantage of the resources, we try to make as much of it available to you virtually. So for example, our USC libraries uh, host training sessions and support sessions, and you have, we have a dedicated librarian for the Annenberg School, and they're there to help you navigate the library resources. If you find that some resource you need for your, your paper or project or any kind of classwork is not available online digitally, but is available, say, on a book stack here at USC, USC libraries will send that to you via mail with postage prepaid for return so that you can read that book, use it for the semester for your project, and then mail it back to USC, no, no charge to you, postage prepaid. 
uh, that's that's how much we try to make sure that you have access to those resources. That will take a book off a shelf, mail it to you, and have it paid so that you can mail it back without any uh, charge to yourself. Great, thank you for that. Um, so another student wants to know how USC ensures that students stay up to date with the latest trends. So our courses are constantly being revised. Um, after every single course offering, there's a revision process where our faculty work with instructional designers to update the curriculum. So that means that you know, if we have a course that runs every semester, that course is going through a revision every semester. Now some changes could be more minor from term to term, but the idea is that these aren't static courses. We didn't develop them back in 2011 and let them sit. Uh, they're being updated by our faculty with a team of instructional designers and media producers to keep the content as up-to-date and relevant as possible. And in addition, we're constantly looking at ways in which we can add new courses, new areas of specialization potentially, to give our students the leg up they need in the professional realm. Thank you, Neil. Um, and then a very common one that we always get is, you know, students are working full time, so they want to know what the workload is like. How many hours per day or per week, perhaps, that they're spending in the classes. Um, so this one maybe, perhaps, obviously Neil, if you can help us, but also Angelisa and Mark, um, you know, maybe tell us what your workload was like a little bit more. Yeah, I'll take that to start, and then I'll ask Angelisa and Mark to maybe provide a little um, perspective. So what I like to tell students is if you're taking two courses a semester, which is what we recommend just so that you can get to the master's program faster, is that it, consider it a part-time job. The reality is in order to be an effective student, in order to get passing grades, not, I'm not talking A grades, but in order to get passing grades and be an effective student, you're probably going to dedicate somewhere between 10 to 12 hours per week per course. So we're talking at least 20 hours a week where you'll be involved with some element of your course. It could be reading, it could be writing, it could be working on a group project, just communicating with your team and your instructors. Every little bit, if you add that all up, we're talking at least 20 hours for two courses and, and maybe more. And I, I say maybe more because it depends on each student. Some students really want to get the A. They want to not just master the learning, but they want to showcase how they can apply it. And you know, some students are very grades driven and I appreciate that. So if you know getting the A is important to you, you're probably gonna have to put in extra effort to you know get the grade that that is so desirable to you. Um, but that's what I generally let students know. Consider it a part-time job. The reality is going to graduate school is a sincere commitment, and you are looking at USC because you believe that that commitment is gonna be worth something. That it's going to be legitimate. That it's gonna be respected. Uh, in some cases, it's gonna be admired. And what I want you to take away is that that, has, that comes with a lot of work. Uh, so you'll be balancing your professional life, of course, and your family life, um, but it is manageable, and our faculty and, our class, and your classmates will help you through it. I mean, we, we, just so that you guys get a sense of how much we work to get our students through the program, uh, if you finish your first three weeks of class as a, as a student in the MCM program, uh, nine out of 10 students finish the program in under two years. The other 10% the other or so finish in a little bit longer because life gets in the way from time to time. You know, you might have um, some significant life issues. We have a lot of students who actually have babies while they're in the program or get married or divorced. Um, we haven't had anyone get married that I know of among students in the program, but we have had a baby between a couple of students in the program. So, you know, there's intimate connections and life events that happen, and we're happy to work to make sure that students uh, are able to succeed. And if it takes a little more time, that's okay. But what I want you all to understand is that if you finish, like, if you start the program essentially and, and you make it through the first few weeks of course and you've committed that this is the right program for you and you're going to take the first semester and complete it, nine out of ten students finish the program right where we want them to finish in under two years. Uh, Mark, Angelisa, you wanted to add anything about you know the the, the commitment to the program and and why you guys chose to uh, stick through the commitment even though it's 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 a challenge. Oh yes, it's definitely a commitment, and um, the program really finds a way um, right from the jump to make you realize how much of a commitment it is because you want you know 
you're going into the program thinking, okay, this is going to be a feeling out process here in the first couple of weeks, okay? Like, how much work are you going to get? And believe me, you get a ton of work. And yes, it's a part-time job, and there will be instances in which it feels like a full-time job. I took two courses throughout the entire program and was, you know, very fortunate to get through in less than two years. You know, I was extremely grateful for that. But there are times when you're in the middle of it, taking a full course load, you're like, wow, this is this is going to eat up your weekend. Um, and you have to be ready for that. You know, you have to be ready to adjust your work schedule. And I would say on average, maybe about 20 to 30 hours a week, there would be times where there's more because you have projects coming down the pipe. And so um, I was one of those that was very grades driven. And so like Neil had mentioned, there will come a cost to that where it's like, okay, you're going to work harder for this because, you know, you want to rock this assignment, not just get it done. You want to own it. And so it kind of, you can gauge it out a little bit, but you'll find in the first three weeks or so um, just how much it takes. And I would say be prepared for, and this is what I found with a lot of classmates, is you're going to find that you'll dedicate at least a day and a half or so of your weekend. Like if you were to wait till the weekend to start your work, you're going to dedicate a day and a half or more of your weekend to doing work. If I could just interrupt, um, we try to encourage all students to take in incremental portions of their work throughout the week and get it done, like their reading or their discussion assignments or some other elements of the paper. So the idea is time management is key. We don't want students, uh, ideally, to wait until the weekend to start working on their courses because then it does feel like you have this insurmountable mountain of work to get through the weekend, as Mark pointed out. Um, but we also want to know that want you to know that uh, should you choose uh, to start with just one class to get a sense of how the program flows, um, that option is available to you. You can start with just one course and uh, make sure that this is the, the right program for you and that this is going to be, uh, and we hope it will be, uh, but that this is going to work for you and your schedule. Um, Angelisa, anything else you want to add? Um, I think Mark pretty much covered it, but I think it's really just um, you know a balancing act and learning um, how to balance your personal life and your work life and school um, and just learning when is the best time for you to work um, and carve out time. So there's there were times where I got up early in the morning before my 8 a.m. Um, start time and did some reading or responded to discussion posts. Um, I often um, spent some time at a nearby coffee shop during my lunch hour and, uh, you know, did some more project work or, you know, after work, whatever it be. But as Neil mentioned, it's not a great idea to wait till the weekend just because a lot of the projects do require um, thinking, a lot of reading, um, strategy building, and you don't want to wait till the weekend to do that. Um, and so I think if you just – and also the way the program is set up is that there are some deadlines that are um, – throughout the week, like smaller deadlines to get you prepared for the bigger assignments um, that's due over the weekend. Um, and so that was kind of helpful because it makes sure that you're not, you know, cramming all the work into, um, you know, your two-day weekend. Great. Uh, I know we're running a little long here. I, I, I just have so many good questions. I want to answer a couple more of them. Uh, Yesenia, I would like to take a question on um, – for Mark and Angelisa um, about what it feels like to be a part of the Trojan family. Uh, but before that, anything else, Yesenia, that um, you saw as a, a top two question? No, uh, I think we got to most of them. And the ones that we didn't, if we didn't answer your question, we will be reaching out to you in the next few days. Um, so I'm sorry, just based on time, we couldn't get to our, all the questions, but we will be sure to reach out. Thank you. Great. So Mark and Angelisa, how does it feel to be part of the Trojan family? What impact has that had on you? Well, it's amazing to be a part of the Trojan family and to be a part of something that you feel is is bigger than yourself. And one thing that I, I kind of want to, like, share that I learned and something that was so important throughout this entire experience is that the most valuable and significant concept I learned and I'm so grateful for is that this program prepares you to not just be a manager, 
it prepares you to be a leader, okay? And you have to understand that being in charge is not just telling people what to do, where to go. And it's about the human aspect, okay? Building connections with people, seeing what they like, what they don't, utilizing their skill set in the best way possible. And, like, for example, a concept that you'll learn are um, – Cotter's Eight Steps for Successful Change and how naturally people are resistant to change because it's new and uncomfortable. But you learn how to go about introducing these new initiatives, setting a foundation, providing clear direction, allowing for discourse, and letting people know how they fit into a bigger picture and play. And so, you know, this change for you, it, this will be a, a, a lifestyle change. It will be uncomfortable at first, but then you'll see how rewarding it is and how valuable it is. And once you get through it, there is no doubt, absolutely no doubt, that you will leave this program as a leader and an agent of change that has the ability to impact so many people. Wow, thank you, Mark. Angelisa? Yeah, it's great to be a part of the Trojan family. I definitely feel like I took away some strong relationships from this program with professors and um, group, ma group mates and group members that I've worked with. Um, I continue to text many of them. Um, even some of us um, exchange text messages about um, job openings or, hey, like, I know you work with this company. Like, let, you know, ever let me know if there's um, some opportunity for me. Or, you know, there's just so many connections that you make with people, um, whether they're close um, or far away. I've also heard people saying, like, hey, so-and-so flew into town, so they made sure to, like, contact that person and get coffee with them and see what they're up to. Um, and so it's just um, really amazing how strong of relationships you build in this program, given that it's all online. Um, and then as Mark was saying, you really do take away some strong leadership skills, um, and you learn more than just um, communication management principles, but truly how to be a leader. Um, here at my work, I feel like I'm always recognizing things that we've learned about change management in the program, and I'm able to apply that and just take on a larger role, and it's just been an awesome experience. Thank you so much. Thank you to both so much for your participation today and for helping enlighten our prospective students on the program. I know that so many of you have other questions that you asked. We have, a, we have them all logged. We will have an enrollment advisor follow up with you to answer those questions. Uh, some of them are specific to you or maybe more technical in nature about the program and the curriculum. And we'll have someone, an enrollment advisor, uh, either Yesenia or we have Philip as well. Their information is on the screen right now. Uh, if you don't have it already, uh, please take it down and feel free to contact us today. And we will make sure that we have your answer followed up with and that we can answer any other questions you have so you can get started on an application for spring. Thank you so much to everyone for their participation and attendance in today's MCM Student Experience Webinar.